Hey, it's Chris. Apple just released an updated 2020 iMac with lots of new features and a familiar design, but it just might be the perfect work from home machine for most people. So strap in, this is gonna be a detailed review. For this review, I got my hands on a config sporting the 3.6 gigahertz 10 core processor with 32 gigs of memory, the one terabyte SSD with the gigabit and nano texture upgrades. And in this video, I'll be sharing my thoughts on the new webcam and the new mics, my real world productivity and workflow experience, gaming, and also watching video content on this gorgeous screen, as well as my thoughts on buying now versus waiting for an iMac with Apple Silicon, and lots, lots, lots more. Now I'm gonna stick the timestamps for everything down in the description, just in case you wanna skip around, although you shouldn't, because it's all very interesting. But we're gonna start things off by talking about something I've been asking about forever, which is the new webcam. The brand new 1080p webcam is anything but ordinary. It's got baked in face detection and it uses the T2 chip inside to automatically tune things like exposure and tone mapping. So basically it isn't just a dumb camera that's pointed at your face, it's a smart camera that does everything that it can to make you look as good as possible. Now when you combine that with what Apple calls a studio quality three mic array, the results are pretty great for video conferencing. Hey, it's Chris. And right now you're looking at my face and hearing my voice as it's being recorded from the brand new 2020 iMac. Now this is a major, massive, super noticeable improvement as you might be able to tell. Right now you're looking at my face and hearing some audio as recorded straight out of the 16 inch MacBook Pro. So you tell me, can you see and hear any sort of a difference? Two roads diverged in a yellow wood and sorry, I could not travel both and be one traveler long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth, then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for that passing there had warned them really about the same. Another headlining feature that's brand new for the iMac this year is the new nano texture glass, which is designed to reduce glare while maximizing detail. Some manufacturers out there have coatings that reduce the glare. That's very important here. We're not just reducing the glare, we're also keeping all that crispy detail. Now, it is a $500 add-on, and it's definitely not a must-have, but having used it, it's also definitely something I wouldn't want to now be without. This technology first appeared as an option on the $6,000 Pro Display XDR and it really makes a massive difference in terms of making the screen more usable in difficult lighting situations. Now, because the nano texture is etched right into the glass, it can bounce light in a very specific way, which is a much better way of solving the glare problem than using a matte chemical coating like other companies, which actually scatters the light and reduces contrast. The nano texture etching on the display does need to be cleaned by the included dry polishing cloth, however, so yeah, you're not gonna wanna lose that. But if for some reason you do, you can actually get a replacement via Apple Care. The screen itself here is a 5K display with 500 nits of brightness, which isn't too bad, and it includes True Tone technology now to help it look as natural as possible in any lighting conditions. And you guys know from past videos here on the channel that I'm a big fan of True Tone. It's really something that sets Apple technology and their screens apart from other displays on other devices. I can definitely notice the bump in quality over a similarly sized display that's only 4K, especially when I'm pixel peeping or doing some photo editing. If you want an example of what I'm talking about, just go watch the last upload. Now the details and the colors really do pop off the screen here, just like the website says, so it's not just marketing hyperbole. In my opinion, it really does look excellent. Now, technically speaking, this isn't a true HDR display. It is, however, an EDR display, which stands for Extended Dynamic Range. And honestly, that is perfectly usable for the average consumer, and even, I would say, for many pros. You're still gonna be getting 10-bit color depth per channel, so yeah, unless you wanna upgrade to that Pro Display XDR for a lot more money, then you're gonna be very happy, trust me. And by the way, it's pretty cool that this actually can power up to two external 6K displays for an insane three screen setup. Now, as long as I'm talking about the screen, this is a great time to just mention the updated speakers, which really do sound great for things like music or watching movies. 
you got this big screen sitting around, I know there are people out there using this thing like a TV. So if that's you, then you should take comfort knowing that that's actually gonna be a pretty good experience. So without a doubt, you're absolutely gonna get room filling sound from these speakers. And just to say that I threw it in, here's a little demo, although it's gonna be hard to tell when you're watching a YouTube video. Now when it comes to deciding which type of iMac you should get, whether it's a regular iMac or some configuration of it or the iMac Pro, you really have to think in terms of cores and more specifically, which apps you're going to be using and how they utilize and scale for core usage. So for instance, if you're gonna be using something like Final Cut Pro, that is optimized to take advantage of multiple cores in a way that certain Adobe apps may not be. So lesson of the day, not all apps are going to scale for more cores. Now here's a good way to think about it. There's actually really a split in terms of how many cores you can get on the iMac versus the iMac Pro. On the iMac, you can configure all the way up to 10 cores, whereas the iMac Pro is really gonna be 10 cores and up. It goes up to 18 cores, actually. Now, in a real world test, for me, I exported about a five minute long 4K video from Final Cut with ProRes optimized footage, and the export did actually finish noticeably faster than on my 16 inch maxed out MacBook Pro. And if you're trying to decide between going portable or getting a desktop, you have to understand the 16 inch MacBook Pro is as pro as it gets. It's as good as it gets in the portable lineup on the Mac side of things. But while it does have some desktop components and parts, it's just dabbling in the desktop world, whereas a desktop is fully desktop. And the difference in power is actually pretty real. Now, Apple did list Fortnite performance on the website, so I did decide to give it a try just because. And while there was some screen tearing initially at the default settings, once I turned on VSync, then Fortnite was very fun and perfectly playable at 60 FPS. Is this gonna be your dream gaming machine? Well, no, especially for the price. But can you play some games, even some AAA titles in a decent, fun environment? Yeah, absolutely. We've got a 10 gig ethernet connection now. That's something that comes standard on the iMac Pro, I believe. And it's nice to have that as an option, at least on the regular iMac. That's particularly useful if you're gonna be working from home and you gotta do a lot of video conferences and you're tired of your connection dropping out. We've also got double the available memory now versus the last model and the SSD is also much faster. All right, let's talk a little bit about who this is for and who should buy it, especially with Apple Silicon looming on the horizon. So first things first, if you're a pro and you know it, then you already know that you're looking at an iMac Pro or a Mac Pro. Again, it's all about the cores. And just to tack onto that, if you're a person who's gonna be relying on the CPU and the GPU all day, consistently, every day, then you also are probably gonna wanna be looking at the iMac Pro. On the other hand, if you need a lot of power but need to save some money, you can spec this thing out pretty impressively and get a lot done. I mean, I'm able to chew through ProRes 4K multicam clips just fine in Final Cut on this machine. And I suspect that there's gonna be plenty of musicians, photographers, and designers who are also going to love this machine. Now in the looks department, in the aesthetics department, this is the same old design, emphasis on old. Now, is that really a real problem in the real world? Well, no. I mean, this thing has a gorgeous display. It's just that it's surrounded by those extra chunky and thick bezels, which is unfortunate. Why don't we say instead of looking bad, it just looks classic. At the very end of the day, I would say it comes down to what you can do with this machine rather than how it looks. And with this machine, you can do a lot. At this point, I would all but guarantee that Apple's saving the new iMac redesign for when Apple Silicon actually hits. And when will that be? I don't know, your guess is as good as mine. And that's part of the problem here when you're trying to make a buying decision. Which really begs the question, should you buy this now or should you try to hold off and wait for an iMac with Apple Silicon inside? Well, here's the thing, if you need it now, I would say don't hesitate to actually pull the trigger and get it purchased. Why? Because Apple has committed to fully supporting this machine and all Intel Macs, the last batch, for the full lifespan of a normal Mac. All right, so that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave your questions down in the comments. Don't forget to check out at Daily Tech, spelled daily T-E-K-K, -K, on Instagram and Twitter. Check out The After Party. That's our podcast. It's usually out on Fridays. That's linked up down below. And lastly, I have to plug applehype.com, also linked up because it's the best place for you to check in the mornings for an app 
an accessory, and the one Apple headline that you have to care about every day, Monday through Friday. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.